Welcome to our lecture online and now that we know what acid base titration is, let's do an example of that. So let's say we have 36 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and we do not know the molarity of that acid and to figure that out we're going to do a titration so we start adding drops of uh, sodium uh, potassium hydroxide and uh, 20, in the end we tr it turns out we're going to be adding 27 milliliters of 0.44 molar potassium hydroxide. So can we figure out what the original concentration was or what the original molarity was of the hydrochloric acid in our sample solution? All right. The way we want to do that is as follows. The amount of excess hydrogen ions in the solution should be the same as the amount of hydroxide ions that we're going to be adding so that they can cancel each other out. Now that's not entirely true because in the end there'll still be some hydroxide ions and some uh, hydrogen ions left in solution but that concentration will be so small because at e equilibrium when we're at neutralization point the concentration is so small that we can basically ignore that final concentration so what we're thinking is that whatever the excess was that was in there will almost in its entirety be cancelled out by the addition of the hydroxide ions added when we add the potassium hydroxide okay so taking that into account we can then say that the um, number of moles of hydrogen ions that were originally in the acidic solution has to equal the number of moles of the hydroxide ions that we're adding. So that was already in solution and this is the amount that we're adding and they have to be equal in order for them to cancel each other out. Okay, how do we figure that out? Well, it turns out that the molarity of the hydrochloric acid that was already there multiplied times the volume of the hydrochloric acid and notice that the molarity is moles per liter and the volume is liters so moles per liter times liter the liters cancel out and we're left with moles which gives us the number of moles of the hydrogen ions in the solution and that is equal to the molarity of the potassium hydroxide that we're adding times the amount of volume of the potassium hydroxide that we're adding. Okay, and what are we looking for? We're looking for the molarity of hydrochloric acid. We're looking for this quantity right there, so we're going to solve that for this. And so we can say that the molarity of the hydrochloric acid is equal to, we divide the right side by the volume of the hydrochloric acid. So we have the molarity of the potassium hydroxide times the volume of the potassium hydroxide all divided by the volume of the hydrochloric acid. Okay, now we're ready to plug in some numbers. So the molarity of the uh, uh, potassium hydroxide will be 0 0.44 moles per liter. Multiply that times the volume of the potassium hydroxide was 27 milliliters. And I said, well, wait a minute. How can I mix liters and milliliters? I'm not supposed to do that, but since the milliliters are going to cancel out, it doesn't really matter, because here we're going to divide that by the volume of hydrochloric acid, which is 36 milliliters. And notice milliliters cancels out and we're left with moles per liter which is the molarity of the hydrochloric acid that we're looking for. And did I bring my calculator? And I didn't, so I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have my calculator, let's see what the answer is. 0.44 times 27 divided by 36 and it's 0 0.33, so this is equal to 0 0.33 moles per liter. That would, be the, that would be the concentration of the hydrochloric acid that we started with. And that's how we do that. It's actually very simplistic. Just realizing that the number of moles of the ion that's in the, in the solution, it could have been a base in the solution, doesn't matter, um, and the number of moles that we're adding of the other ion to cancel out the, the one that's already there. And so you can then see that we solve for the amount that we're looking for, in this case the concentration of hydrochloric acid, and that would also be the concentration of the hydrogen ion in solution. And so we divide both sides by the volume. Volumes cancel out and we're left with the concentration that we're looking for. So a very, very straightforward method to do that. That's how we figure out the concentration of the original solution in the titration, titration problem.